Anambra got him out. I know the Anambra state you got him out. Dateline March 17, 2006. Orca, Anambra State. Peter Obi was sworn in as governor of the state. His vision for Anambra to develop all sectors simultaneously, summed up in the Anambra Integrated Development Strategy and its. It's one thing to have a vision, it's another thing to have a strategy for the delivery. And it is a strategy for the delivery of our vision. It is a process that allows us proper planning, budgeting, execution of the plan, supervision, and ensuring delivery of our plan. Eight years later, has Governor Peter Obi's administration performed to par? Has he met his own expectations? Here are the facts you draw the conclusions. Fact. Essentially, he has restored relative peace to the state, creating an enabling environment for inflow of investments and new industries. Fact. He has constructed and rehabilitated over 900 kilometers of roads, giving Anambra perhaps the best rural network of roads in Nigeria. Fact, he has opened up communities with the construction of 28 bridges that have enhanced economic activity across the state. Fact, he has revamped the health sector with the construction of the Anambra State University Teaching Hospital and giving grants to missionary health institutions to enhance service delivery. Now, these institutions have gained accreditation. Fact, he returns schools to the missionaries and still funds them, which has influenced the rise in the standard of education in the state. Fact, he was the first to build two mini stadia in the state. Fact, he has built the first state secretariat since the creation of the state. Fact. He has helped light up Anambra as it were by distributing over a thousand transformers throughout the state. Fact. He has cleared the arrears of pensions and gratuities owed by the state since 1996. Fact. He is building two major hotels and resource centers at Onicha and Agulu. And the man is not yet finished. Let's see how he has tried to foster robust communication and ease economic activity among Anambarians by a system of road networks judged to be a regional best in Africa. Anambra State one of the states south of the Sahara that is committed to achieving the Millennium Development Goals 1 to 8. This it is doing successfully using the framework of the Anambra Integrated Development Strategy and its One major Millennium Development Goal that is a key prerequisite for sustainable development is the ability of rural communities to be accessible or adequately serviced by good roads for the easy movement of people and goods to major towns and markets. Since Governor Peter Obi took over the reins of office, his administration has constructed and rehabilitated over 900 kilometers of roads and still counting. The major objective here is to build a good network of roads and bridges that will open up access to the outside world for accelerated development, especially for communities that have been locked up for years. The people of Amansi through our family in Orca South are now connected by this new bridge over the Ezu River. When in 2005 the small existing bridge collapsed under heavy traffic, 
They found it cumbersome accessing the state capital and other parts of the state. Now with this bridge, they have an easy gateway to the state capital, Orca and beyond. Uh, so far as for this road, it is a pan but now it will become down and do well. Uh. To ease the burden of commuting from Umiata to Umweze Anam, the OB administration awarded the construction of a new road that is 15 kilometers in length. The road, which runs through Otupu River, means that a bridge had to be built over the river, which had cut off communities on either side. With the Otupu River bridge completed and the entire stretch of the 15-kilometer road nearing completion, the people of Imiata can now heave a sigh of relief as they are now connected to their kith and kin. But that is not all, as their farm produce can now be easily evacuated to larger markets. Predominantly, the people living here, they are farmers. And after farming, you know, first of all, they wouldn't have good farming equipment, so they use hose and the rest to farm. After farming, although the land is very fertile, they will now suffer to use boats to go through the river to the urban centers like Utuacha and Donecha to sell their farm products. Sometimes because they can't take their farm products back home, people tend to cheat them. They give them very low prices for their goods and then at the end of the day, they come back home poor and empty again, you know. So, but with this road, everybody is just praying for the government because they never thought it possible for the, it's not just that they built road, but the quality of the road. Aside from the bridge over Otupo River, the completion of the other bridge with stone pitch embankments in Orumba North has provided a link to various communities in the same local government. It has indeed provided a shorter link for the people of Orumba South who would have had to travel over 90 minutes going through two local governments, Anyocha and Aguata respectively, to get to the state capital. Now with the road completed, the journey takes about 20 minutes. It is simply wonderful. <laughs> We've never had it so good. And uh, to go to Apo, from Apo to uh, Agulezi Chuku takes you about two hours. But I believe after this road has been done, 15 minutes to Agulezi Chuku. The people of Okuna, Nukbaku, are also counting their games as the OB administration has replaced the dangerous triple box culvert with the Bunabo Bridge across the Abibia Okbuna River. And with the height of the new bridge, the menace of floods on the road during the rainy season will no longer hinder them from their community. This road and bridge also connect communities in Oka North and Oka South. Normally, last year, last two years, this place used to be a hectic area during the rainy season. But now, with this, people have been happy, feeling that the special place of God during some years to be a thing of the past. Another very important road link nearing completion is the Agulueze Chuku Ajali Road. The Otaro Bridge, which is on the main alignment, connects to local governments, Aguata and Orumba North. Although it's still under maintenance, it is being used by the people, giving them the shortest link to each other. To access Lilu Town in Ihiala local government, commuters have had to go through the neighboring state, Imo. But with the completion of this beautiful road, with large box culvert and drainages on both sides, the people have a different story to tell. As they don't come do this one, we are very happy for for the work. See, before before, if we drop for Ihal, we are from Lagos or from any place, drop for Ihal, and there is no lead, no road to lead lead you to your destination. Uh, so, if you ask the Akara people, say no road, no road to lead. Just so of recent, I think last last year. They can't complete this one. Reach here, Apalili here. The Northia Link Road in Njikoka local government provides passageway not only out to the Onnicha Enugu Expressway without going through Orca, but also provides the road for students to go to school. 
there are still numerous major road projects ongoing in the state. The Agulu Bypass Road and Bridges Project is earnestly under construction. The aim here is to replace the small bridge and dangerous curves on the road, which had in the past caused accidents with fatalities. These twin 105-meter, 12-meter wide bridges, including 2-meter walkways on either side, are being built at a height of over 20 meters, thus giving commuters a good view of the famous Agulu Lake. Uh, because of the nature of it, it has so many bends. And for that reason, so many uh, accidents used to occur from time to time. And with this road, I think uh, there will be a, a, a lot of improvement. There will be smooth movement of uh, traffic. And I'm sure it will reduce uh, that uh, uh, menace, you know, that uh, accident. Everything we are more safe, even the main road, even the drivers, because the accident were there for a year. Just uh, pray to God, say we'll get a wise people in Nigeria now who, who know better. Due to the undulating nature of the terrain, and to further protect the road from being washed away during the rainy season, the line drains are being constructed on both sides of the three-kilometer stretch. The Ozubulu Atani Road and Bridget Project is underway with the three bridges on the alignment already constructed. This 12-kilometer road with various box culverts has retaining walls near the bridges to protect them from erosion. These people are mainly agrarian and will find this project, when completed, a huge relief from their present condition. This road is one of the worst road or path in the Anambra State. But when we got the information that uh, there's a uh, plan to put the road in order, in fact, everybody was excited. We felt very, very happy. And I must tell you that this uh, present government has done a wonderful thing. All right. Very wonderful. With the numerous road projects ongoing within the state, the OB administration has taken measures to ensure quality and that the people get value for their money. Governor B has insisted that contractors handling their projects sign a maintenance bond of five years. This has ensured the good quality of roads seen in the state. If I the government like this road, you will sign a bond with the government that you have to maintain this road. If it is not, if it is a stone-based road, you have to maintain it for seven years. But if it is a lateritic uh, road, base road, you maintain it for five years. So the maintenance of this road will be done by the contract for the next five years. So if you like, you cheat yourself. If you cheat yourself, you continue, you continue working on the road for the next five years. So if you do a good, road, a good job, you go once and for all. They say health is wealth. How true. The maxim health is wealth holds true in an Umbra state. As people need qualitative healthcare delivery, to enjoy the developmental strides and projects being embarked upon by the state. In this wise, the OB administration has converted the Anaku General Hospital into what is now the Anambra State University Teaching Hospital. This complex, located in the heart of the state capital, is the new pride of Anambra. With functional state-of-the-art facilities in the Accident and Emergency Center, Surgery, pathology center, intensive care, plus other integrated healthcare centers. These facilities are presently providing treatment to patients, not only from Anambra, but from the adjoining states like Kogi and Enugu, whose communities border Anambra state. Occasionally, foreign medical missions have come using the facilities in treating patients. The complex also serves the Anambra State University in its medical program. This place uh, offers uh, various forms of uh, uh, treatment for 
most orthopedic problems. We have uh, three orthopedic surgeons. I'm one of them, manning this place. So most of the orthopedic problems that we would have taken most of our indigenous out of the state, out of Nigeria, are being managed in this setup. We also have other specialties in surgeries. We have uh, two general surgeons. We have uh, three urologists. We have uh, one ear, nose, and throat surgeon. We have uh, uh, five gynecologists and obstetricians. We have a pediatric surgeon, one of them. We have uh, then they will have uh, two plus C surgeons. So you can see that uh, if you, for example, if you use surgery to judge, you find out that almost all scopes of surgeries are covered in this hospital. In the Unnature Anumule Regional Hospitals, the story is the same. The government has intervened with the provision of new facilities and equipment. There is now dialysis center at the General Hospital on Nietzsche. This is Norfia Psychiatric Hospital, which now wears a new look with the building of new offices and accommodation for patients. To further enhance primary health care delivery, the state government has partnered with various religious bodies that have already established hospitals. To this end, the OB administration set aside grants worth billions of naira, given directly to select missionary healthcare institutions. The money is provided to improve infrastructure for accommodation of staff and students, and accredited programs. In the past, the state had distributed medical equipment valued at over 135 million to 105 government and mission healthcare facilities across the state. One of such benefiting missions is the Ienu Hospital, Ogidi Udemili North Local Government Area, which is over a hundred years old in providing primary health care to the people. Historically, it was the first school of midwifery east of the Niger and has delivered many prominent Anambarians, including Emeka Yoko. To keep up the standard of churning out qualified midwives and nurses, the institution has built office and classroom complexes, theatres and doctors' quarters, and is now capable of training a hundred midwives and nurses yearly. They came in and they saw healthcare as something that should be done. Uh, for the masses, and they, they, then, they then saw us, mission uh, institution, especially old ones such as us, uh, as collaborators in the provision of healthcare services because we, we, we do not serve people from the moon. The people who serve here are actually Anambra State indigents. A lady of Lord Ihiala has been able to use the grant from the state government to build the Madonna Hostel for School of Midwifery, the Immaculate Heart Hostel for the School of Nursing, and the Hostel for the School of Medical and Laboratory Sciences, which is nearing completion. Just recently, three gigantic structures have been also erected in the same direction to provide hostel admission for the students of med medical laboratory, students of nursing, students of midwifery. And these have helped a great deal in promoting the school to the highest. In fact, the school is the best in the whole federation. The St. Joseph Hospital at Dezinnuku has built with his grant a general outpatient building wing and two hostels for the School of Nursing and School of Midwifery. Also, the state government has built the Dr. Nguinlo Art Center. The people are looking forward to when the center will be fully operational and they can have the best heart Okay. Previously, people from the environment somehow, uh, you know, old place always um, weaken the interest of the people. They always want new places. And so, being age, age, an aged hospital, people then we are not that patronizing coming to assess their health here. But through the intervention of the government and the projects going on, it started creating interest in the hearts of the people and 
if you go out and into the world, you can also see, even though the structures are not completely ready to render service to the people, but that impact of coming in of the government has already created in the minds of the people that something is going on and that will really help them. And they are coming, at least still, making use of the old structures within. They are assessing their health. With funds from the state government, St. Charles Borromeo School of Nursing, Fege Onicha, is building a four-story complex that will house the School of Nursing and its hostel. It has already built a befitting doctor's quarters and is currently building more staff quarters within the facility. This magnificent facility is the ultra-modern maternity complex within the Holy Rosary Specialist Hospital and Maternity, Waterside on Nature. The healthcare complex also has a new building for a school of midwifery, which will be put to use as soon as the overhead water tank is completed. Also under construction and nearing completion is the pharmaceutical diagnostic center. But you can see right behind me, this three-story building, maternity complex, housing the clinic, the delivery area, the postnatal area, the children ward. So it has given a real positive impact to the output of the hospital. Yes, we've been known for quality and standard services, but now you have more accommodation, more room for effective services and proper treatment. One thing is evident. With the upgrading of the schools of nursing and midwifery owned by the missions, it's just a matter of time before Anambra State starts to export highly qualified nurses and midwives to other parts of the country. Convinced that the loss of treasured values and discipline was as a result of government taking over missionary schools, the OB administration returned 1,040 schools to the Catholic and Anglican missions. He also disbursed funds to each of these institutions for them to, on their own, upgrade their facilities for a better standard of education. Going around the schools, one can see the huge improvements in the facilities and amenities in these institutions. The OB administration has also impacted positively on tertiary institutions. The Anambra State University now called Chukwe Mecca Udumegu Juko University in its Igbariam campus has benefited from this administration as some of the faculties now have new blocks the Faculty of Law, Agriculture and the Department of Mass Communications. Not left out are some new quarters to house lecturers. The OB administration has facilitated two new hostels being built by the Central Bank of Nigeria. And recently, he doled out 5 billion naira to the institution for continued infrastructural development. This is the College of Agriculture, fitted with new classroom blocks, new laboratories, new male and female hostels. And the renovation has just started. From roads and bridges, integrated healthcare infrastructure to qualitative education, these are in the reckoning of discerning observers, snippets of the vision of the man and his administration, implemented through the instrumentality of ANIDS.